your calls, nine lines, all in the NFL. Let me give you a couple themes, a couple little tidbits as we start this second hour. Uh, just a little things of uh, of um, uh, of the games from the weekend. I tell you, the one game I liked, and I didn't have the guts to play it because it's so difficult to do this. But I I thought about it yesterday, and I loved it, and I would have won it handily. And it's one of those days you never win a thing. You know, the all weekend long, all four games. The one bet that to me was the best bet to make and the safest play to play was the under of Buffalo and Jacksonville. I mean, that is the one I loved. It was like 40, 39 and a half, and that is the one I absolutely loved. And instead, I said, geez, I mean, I got Colin, who's got his Ramsey shirt on. I can't root for the Bills, which is what I kind of wanted to do, but I didn't want to do that with a 15-year-old watching a game with me, and I'm yeah, it, quietly, without telling him, rooting for the other team. So I had to root for Jacksonville, and as usual, I didn't win. So uh, this goes to show you, sometimes you be a nice guy, you still lose. But the under of that game, you can't root for unders in a postseason. You root for tackles. But that was the sure thing. I swear to God. And I loved it all week. The fact that the Buffalo under was the way to go. And I also went against Brent, who, by the way, stinks with picks. 0-4. I mean, he's like a one right. 0-4. Brent had Jacksonville, and I went Buffalo with him on Friday. And I said, ah, you know what? What the heck? I, I, I take Buffalo, the one game I disagree with Brent on. And then when it came to making a pick, I went Jacksonville to be nice to Collins. So that is the one that I wanted to get to right out of the gate. Um, you know, either Jim doesn't know the doesn't know the rules or somebody in the truck. And, you know, Romo has improved because Romo has stayed away from predicting the play before the play is presented, which is, uh, I think, an advantage. I don't like the play being presented to me five seconds before the snap of the ball. We had been screaming about that with Romo throughout. But they did not know the rule. As to, uh, they, they were totally confused on the rule with the injury with Tyree with Tyrod Taylor in the last 40 50 seconds of that game the runoff the non runoff no timeouts how do you handle this you know Romo actually said is this a freebie i mean they were lost they 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 did not know anything about that rule scenario and Nance you know one thing about Al Michaels when you hear Al do a ball game and i i've known this forever Al knows that rule book like he put it together Al knows the rule book I mean, Jim did not know. Jim's going to say no in that situation. You're going to have a runoff. And Jim was completely silent. Not a peep. And it had Romo babbling away for five minutes about whether they were going to take the 10 seconds off the clock because of Tyrod Taylor getting carried off the field off being concussed. You know what that was going on. And then finally they did take it off, but nobody saw it on the clock because nobody at CBS had said, hey, by the way, let's make Romo look good by taking a set, by, by showing him how the clock is being 10 seconds. And then in the other sequence, Kareni, who I like as an official, he didn't even know about that. He forgot about the 10 second runoff until uh, the guys called him at, at CBS, uh, at, 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 um, uh, at the NFL offices, called the official on the field. Don't forget about the 10 second runoff off whoever that was who got hurt late in that game who was it was it um no it was the penalty on the offensive uh, grounding the intentional grounding they get the runoff in that sequence and they didn't know about that and Kareni was about to run a play without the 10 second runoff so the 10 second run- runoff was fascinating there at the end of the games in those two spots and he uh now listen they got the core right in the same game everybody's screaming about that today boy look at the officials not knowing the rules bottom line is Kareni knows the rules he was gotten he he got he, he got a huge break and he got bailed out by the backup official and the NFL office because before they ran another play. But he knows the rule. Um, the sequence with Romo and Nance was very strange. Nance did not back Nance Jimmy, who is very good, did not do a good job with the ten second runoff. And I'll tell you something else that confused me on. How about the penalty on the fourth down on the field goal attempt in the first half when the Jaguars were off sides? I couldn't. Uh, was it a first and goal or not? It was half the distance. It was fourth and a yard. What was the first and goal? Nobody could figure it out. Romo said it was, but then he was a little indecisive about it because the officials took forever. Nance was unclear. That was very confusing. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and, now, Ro- and Romo had just got through telling you what a terrible play that was. They should have taken the five-yard penalty 
and just backed up to let him have more room to kick it. Yeah, and you can't do that because just in fact what occurred. Yeah, a couple of mistakes there. And on the subject of announcers, let's be fair here and let's be equally knocking everybody. I tell you, Al's got a Al, the oatmeal must have been cold when it was served to Al on Saturday. Boy, is Al cranky at the end of the half. Anybody see that with uh, Hock, uh, with uh, Hockley as far as the play scenario? Al, you know, it's past his bedtime. I mean, Al, Al got a break that the game was at the LA Coliseum, you know, basically a walk from his house. Where I'm sure Al lives in Brentwood. You don't think Al lives uh, near USC's campus. I mean, uh, bottom line is, Al was very cranky. How cranky was Al? Late in that game, my goodness gracious, he was cranky at the end of the half. And Hockley took forever, whether it was a catch or not catch. I forget the sequence. Rams were driving, and they took for absolute ever to figure out what, in fact, it was. It was the play at the four-yard line uh, with the play. And also the Rams, that's an atrocious play. You saw Pittsburgh do it against New England, which cost them the home field on December 17th. When, you're a, uh, when you are a head coach in that situation or a quarterback, and is late in a half for a game without any timeouts, do not, under any circumstances, do not complete a pass inbounds. Roethlisberger did it, couldn't get out of bounds. They had to be hasty. And the Rams got away with it and kicked the field goal. But do not, under any circumstances, put yourself in that sequence. And they did that. And I didn't like the fact that it took Hockley 20 minutes, and it did. Uh, but I was awfully cranky on that. Now, that's the third thing I wanted to say. Fourth thing I want on 74,300 at the Coliseum. And a decent, a good crowd. I wanted 80. I got 74. I'll have to live with that. I thought the crowd was active. Uh, you know, I thought, you know, the pom-poms, they were into it. Felt like a home game. So, uh, you know, I don't know why we needed Bob Kraft at the game. I mean, why couldn't Bob go to the uh, – uh, if Bob wanted to see an NFL game, why didn't Bob go to the Tennessee-Kansas City game? I mean, uh, or why didn't Bob end up going to New York? Bob went to L.A. because Bob wants to be Hollywood. I mean, Bob Kraft is at the L.A. Coliseum there on Saturday, the owner of the Patriots, another playoff team. I thought that was a little much. I got to be honest. I, I thought that was a little much. That's Bob with the hair, you know, growing length and everything else with the young uh, you just want to be part of the scene I, I, I was Dick Berman the judge there too drinking mint juleps who ruled uh, for the Patriots and then he was at the Hamptons that weekend uh, with the pay with with Kraft maybe Dickie was part of the Roger Goodell set at the LA Memorial Coliseum but I was shocked that uh, does Kraft have to be at the pay have to be at the Ram game does he have to be everywhere where he thinks it's a scene? I, I don't know. That was a little rough. Uh, I said, geez, what's Bob Kraft? Bob, you got a football game. You got major stories brewing with ESPN. You got to be at the L.A. Coliseum on Saturday night hanging out, in the, uh, hanging out upstairs. Uh, I don't know. That bothered me. I have to admit. I have to admit. Now, the last thing I have to say, and it bothers me to even bring it up, but the last thing I have to say, and you know how much I love him, uh, that was not a... Uh, let's be fair. Uh, that was not a first-class quality broadcast. I hate to do this, but I have to be fair. I, uh, Sean did not have a good day uh, for the uh, ESPN. Nor did, nor did Gruden. Outside of showing us Brad Johnson on the play that uh, was the other play in the history of the NFL where a quarterback caught his own pass for a touchdown, uh, which he did, of course, uh, like Mariota did there. He did it in 98 for the Vikings, and Gruden had it on his cell phone. Um, uh, Sean had a rough game. Um, he was way, way, way over the top on that. Well, he was over the top with the Decker play on the touchdown. And then he was totally over the top on the play with the uh, with the fumble by Henry. I mean, you had to think there was a very good chance that he was down before the Chiefs had recovered the ball and went in the end zone. And Sean went way over the top, a voice cracking and everything. I mean, that was the first thing I thought of. Boy, he looked down to me. They're going to go back and look at this. Uh, I was very, very very surprised of how Sean handled that really almost too exuberant and you know that was not a classic game all right I mean uh, too many mistakes uh, two average teams I mean I like the game too but that was not a classic game and you got the idea that uh, I don't know that ESPN wanted to make sure that when we watched it in the second half that we were watching an all-time epic you know that was not Chargers Dolphins in 81 all right let's let's call it like we see it 41 38 that was not on that level a lot of mistakes Kansas City imploded both teams never played well at the same time 
time. Kansas City, a uh, lousy f- second half. Titans, a lousy first half. Uh, and I thought, and I love him, and I hate to say this, I did not think it was Sean's uh, best performance. And Gruden, for whatever the reason, whether it was the idea that you know, he knows that in two days he's going to be with the Raiders. Anyone who will say anything that was going to annoy Kansas City. Gruden looked like he was a broadcaster who couldn't wait to get the hell out of the booth. And I like Gruden too. And I think he's good on the air. A lot of people don't. I do. And I just think that Gruden, you know, outside of the whole thing with... Um, the the whole thing with the uh, with the Brad Johnson cell phone thing, I got the impression, and maybe I was looking for it. I I probably was looking for it uh, from a standpoint of uh, you know I want to see how Gruden was going to react, and I did not see the last minute or so when I went back to the booth to sort of bid Gruden to do. I didn't see that, but I just got the impression there that you know Gruden was just about ready to get the heck out. And he was looking forward to leaving. You know, Sean tried to have some laughs with him about the $100 million contract and all that. But I just got the impression from that standpoint that Gruden was waiting to get the hell out of there. Uh, and he was he didn't mail it in, but he didn't have that same zest that I've noticed in the past. That was just my take. So, Sean, over the top late. Gruden, a little spotty and, you know, sounded... Just like, you know, tentative is the best way to explain it. Bob, of course, where there's a scene, Kraft's got to be there. Michael's missed the oatmeal on Saturday morning, and he may, I don't know, it must have been cold oatmeal that he got without the syrup in it. Romo and Nance, Jim, got all the rule book. Uh, you know, somebody was lost at the end of that game about the 10-second run. You can't have your partner say, are they getting a freebie? I mean, that that's rough. You can't have your partner say in a playoff game, well, I don't get this. Are they, uh, 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 Is Buffalo getting a freebie here? A freebie? What do you think? A free? What do you mean a freebie? Huh? Well, it's the postseason. Freebie. Jobs are on the line. There's no freebies. And um, the play that I was afraid to make and scared money never wins, as I've said a thousand times, was the Buffalo Wonder. 15 after the hour, we continue. Yeah, don't go.